My parents lived next door to a farm that had horses, so I got into horses that way. Christy Beamish on the outside, punched out by Josh Guerriero. None of my family at all have got any background with horses or anything like that. Dad was a jockey, my mum's part of the Weatherby family, so it's always been part of our childhood growing up. First memory is probably going to Aintree. Dad was chairman there for 25 years. I always rode. I was lucky enough to have ponies and stuff and uh, rode and then um, got my first ride at 17 in a point to point. It's going to be Emma Chelly's Christie's Fox Hunters in the hands of Ollie Greenall. We're similar age, we rode as amateurs together. He was riding down south, but you know, when, when we were riding in the amateur races at Cheltenham Aintry, we used to see each other then, so I got to know him through riding really. And then um, he was at Dan Skelton's, and so, so I saw him at the races and stuff. And then he, he was sort of interested in, in a move, so it happened really. It was just so lucky because it's not easy working together. You know, most partnerships are with families and stuff, so it could have easily not worked. But I think pure luck really, it's just, it's just worked out well that our characters seem to work well together and we have very split roles, which is, has developed over the years. Yeah, we're best mates. We've been best mates for a while now. We amazingly don't have too many fallouts considering, considering like being business partners and also being mates is quite difficult, but uh, we seem to get on well. We're quite different people, so it just works well. We don't clash too much, um, so it makes life a lot easier. So the winner of the John Smith's Fox Hunters Chase for 2008 is number six, Christy Beamish, ridden by Mr. Josh Guerriero. I had some great days, yeah. I loved my point to pointing and the riding under rules was sort of, I tried to give it a bit of a go seriously, but I was always too heavy. So I just look back at it as a lot of fun. We had a lot of friends riding at the same time, Ollie and Will Biddick, Sam Aldi and Popham, we were all riding together. So we're all good friends, um, but it was good fun, yeah. I'd probably have liked to have gone professional at one stage in my career, but it, it wasn't going to happen. But I was actually glad in the end I stayed amateur, rode in some of the big races. Uh, big fish in a small pond sort of thing, which actually probably worked out well in the end. But it was reasonably short, I only rode for 10 years. I just enjoyed riding when I was riding every day, I was fit and sort of towards the end when I started training, I wasn't riding as much. My fitness levels weren't as good and I just didn't enjoy the riding as much. So I was, I was pleased I did it for a short time, but you know, when I was fit and you know, had the eye on the game. I worked for Mick Easterby for eight years and I was heavily involved in sort of the, the yard management side really and I always sort of enjoyed that side so sort of probably then I thought I'd probably train pointer pointers but my sort of ambition was to be a farmer really. I had a herd of cattle that I wanted to come home here to, to, to look after uh, which is what I did to start with and just sort of had probably half a dozen pointer pointers and just they probably got more and more and the cattle got less and less and it sort of gradually happened really which is actually quite good so we started off really small and we got bigger and bigger probably got up to about 25 point of pointers and then just sort of point of points in the area were drying up it was getting harder and harder with less races to actually have horses trained lo um, run locally so owners just didn't enjoy it as much really so we just felt then that we probably needed to get a license um, and you know like then we started off small Josh came on board and just grew grew slowly sl build more stables as we went and it was sort of worked like that really. I went to Dan Skelton's assistant and uh, Ollie wanted to start training up here um, and we were friend we've been friends a long time and he said he just wanted someone to come and help him do it and someone with a bit of experience. Uh, it just made sense but for me to try and set up on my own training would have been very difficult so it's just worked well for both of us here. So he, he does all the day-to-day the -day yard stuff so he does the, the training of the horses and running of the yard, which was important. We started off doing it together, but it just didn't work really. It's so opinionated, the way horses are trained, where horses run and stuff, it has to be one person making a decision. So we did used to have a lot of arguments about that really, and I had very different ideas coming from Mick Easterby to what he had coming from Dan, and it just it became apparent pretty early on that we needed to, to be clear in what we were gonna do. So yeah, he does that side, and I do more running the business side, getting the shares sold in the horses, going racing, looking after the owners when they come, and that sort of thing. And it's Buddy One, taken on by no ordinary Joe on the near side. He wrote on the far side, he's back in third. Imagine Weirdly, because we've been training together since the start, it didn't actually feel quite as maybe it looked from the outside, because um, we'd always done it together, and I was obviously keen for him to be on the license, so it was sort of, joint responsibility and he got the recognition he deserved 
But like you say, to, to, to actually win at Cheltenham in the first season with him on the licence for him and his family and everything, I think that meant a huge amount. And the time he couldn't be better really to, to get that horse in the yard and, and for it to work out like it did. And racing up to Waterline, it is Iroko who has taken the Martin Pike. It will be hard to beat last year just because obviously you have, if you have so many winners, all your horses then become get to a level where they're going to start struggling to win. Uh, but we're trying to buy plenty of new horses all the time. We probably are on target really now. I think hopefully we've got a chance of beating last year, but the main thing is just trying to get some nicer winners on the board, which we seem to have done this time. Guess Keel wins the Grand Sefton. Tom Pumley given the lead up the last, wins with Henry Brooks.